I'm not here to teach you what to think. I'm here to teach you how to think. Taking her to a swingers club. I almost went to a swingers club on a first date with a girl that I met on the internet. It never panned out because she was offering me more drama than I was interested in. Again, same idea. Meeting up with a girl, she's bored with guys, she's bored with everything, she wants some sort of an adventure. Taking her to a swingers club as a couple on a first date might be a possibility, especially if you present it as, let's go to a swingers club, but all we'll do is watch. We won't even have to participate. We'll just go there and watch. And once you set it up that way, it makes it a lot safer for the two of you to show up there. Cost. Even as a couple, especially if it's your first date, the cost is going to be very high to get in. Forced impressions. A lot less than a strip club, because in a swingers club, you're almost expected to be showing up as a couple, and you are. There's a man and a woman there, and there will be people who look at you, people who will be hitting on you, asking you about your relationship, and you might have to tell a lot of people, look, it's our first time, it's our first night, uh, we don't really want to interact with anybody just yet. So there's going to be a lot of that. But nobody's going to think ill of you or bad of you for showing up. If anything, they'll be more than happy that a new couple has showed up. So forced impression is not an issue. You get a star for that. Focus interactive. In a swingers club environment, you only have to interact with other couples as much as you want to, or as little as you want to. There is no forced interaction between couples in a swingers club. If people don't want to interact, they don't have to. And that rule is in place to maintain the swinger lifestyle. So you can spend all the time you want focusing on her, even if other people are having sex all around you. Is there an easy out? Well, it is a club environment, but if you're really not happy with what's going on, you get up and leave. The only thing you have to worry about is, have you got naked in order to be in the area for voyeurism? And if you're not naked and you have all of your stuff with you, just grab your stuff and you can go no problem in leaving. Sexability in a swingers club? Boo yeah. Plenty of opportunities to have sex in a swingers club, and you can do it on premises at some swingers clubs. If you are at a what's called a off-premise swingers club, where everybody goes to a swingers club to meet, to mingle, maybe make out, but they have to have sex off the site, you won't have any problem finding people saying, oh, why don't you come back to our place and you can have sex? Or we can recommend a good place for you guys to go to. Here's the address, and it'll only cost you so much. So cost is a negative, forced impressions is uh, manageable, so that's a positive, focus interactive is a positive, easy out is a positive, sexability, four out of five stars for going to a swingers club. A BDSM fetish club. I once dated a woman who was married, but in an open relationship, I had met her husband, everything was fine, there was no cheating at all going on, and one of our first dates was to go out to a fetish club. And I showed up there, but she was there with another guy as well. And uh, she was just looking for some BDSM play, and I really liked her. And we, uh, you know, I flogged her, I paddled her, I whipped her, and it was a lot of fun. The thing about a fetish club is that if the person has never, ever had any experience in the world of BDSM or fetishes, they don't have to interact with anybody, but it might be a bit shocking to them that people would subject themselves to things that would or could be categorized as abusive. And what you have to understand is that in a fetish club, everything that happens happens with consent. People, nobody is forced to do anything they don't want to do. Everybody is a willing participant. Okay, let's start going through this. Cost, fetish clubs. Yes, there's going to be a door cost and the prices of drinks, uh, and alcohol will actually be quite high. So there is a cost to it. Number two, forced impressions. When you get into a fetish club, if you're not dressed the part, there'll be expectations of you of why are you here? And are you really that much of a newbie? Do you know anything about it? So there's going to be an expectation that you know something about going out to a fetish club, especially when it's on a first date. Focus interactive. Because you don't have to participate, you can sit back and watch. You don't have to participate with anybody you don't want to, so you and your date can focus on each other the entire time there. Although every, everything there is a spectacle, it's very much a spectator sport where a lot of people just sit back and watch. She may be very inclined to go up and talk to the people who are participating, which means that she's not paying any attention to you. That's a uh, risk that you have to be willing to take. 
but there is a great opportunity for focused interactive. And uh, that's the only start we have so far. Is there an easy out? Well, yes, they can't keep you there. You're not forced in there. It's not like you're